but what are the complications that you can get with LVADs? First, of course, is going to be hemolysis because the blood passes through this mechanical circuit, ball bearings through multiple motors and rotors. You can get a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, that is RBC fragmentation, which can result in significant anemia and even jaundice. And the device can go for thrombosis. And because of the thrombosis, you can get thromboembolism and stroke as well. And device malfunction is a reality and it happens even, albeit at a lesser frequency in third generation devices, but still it happens even in third generation devices as well. And bleeding can happen, uh, not just uh, thrombosis, bleeding can be due to over anticoagulation, number one as a complication for anticoagulation. Plus at the same time, it can be due to acquired von Willebrand factor deficiency also. Why you can have to get von Willebrand factor deficiency? We have discussed that in hematology itself. So these multimers of von Willebrand factors, while passing through these motors and mechanical circuits, they get broken down into monomers. As you all know, the multimers are more effective than monomers. So if most of the von Willebrand factor multimers are broken into monomers, it will be less effective resulting in bleeding tendency. And patients can develop heparin-induced thromboserapenia because of the use of heparin. And patients can develop progressive right ventricular failure because it supports only the left ventricle being a mechanical device of course the device can easily go for infection and you have to be wary of and uh, another peculiar problem that can happen is fusion of this aortic valve leaflets why because lvad is a device that's going to suck a lot of blood out of the left ventricle leaving very little blood in the left ventricle at the end i told so the ed will be very low so the contractility will be very poor plus coupling with the failure component the contraction is going to be negligible so the aortic valve is not going to open at all. Plus at the same time, the blood from the LVAD is going to go above the aortic valve into the ascending aorta. That also keeps the aortic valve closed. And this chronic non-opening or under-opening of the aortic valve can result in fusion of the aortic valve leaflets. And that can lead to AR or AS or both. And next, talking about biventricular failure. As I told you, if there is a significant right ventricular failure or TR, you cannot go for LVAD, you need to go for BIVADs only. And the only current long-term BIVAD available as of now is the syncardia that is total artificial heart. Remember, syncardia, total artificial heart is approved only as BTT, that is bridge to transplant, but not as destination therapy, like most of the LVADs we have discussed. So which means the patient should be eligible for cardiac transplantation and should be listed for heart transplantation but to prevent the death in meanwhile, this device can be used as BTT, but it should not be used as a final destination option for the patient. That is not yet approved as of 2021. And uh, this is a concept that's been there since 1980s itself. But with technologies, right now we are in the third generation of total artificial heart. What are you going to do? You are going to cut and remove both the native ventricles, both the right and the left ventricle from the person, including all the valves, mitral, tricuspid, pulmonary, as well as aortic valve, and are going to attach two artificial ventricles in the form of artificial right ventricle and artificial left ventricle. And uh, the proximal end of these artificial ventricles will be attached uh, to the atrium through a 27 millimeter inflow. And the distal ends will be attached to the great vessels like aortic pulmonary artery with the help of 25 millimeter outflow. And of course the ventricles will be uh, driven from the outside through some external drivers that are going to pass out of the body through the abdominal wall and uh, they'll be driven pneumatically. So these are called as pneumatic drivers, which is going to drive the artificial right and the left ventricle together they can generate a stroke volume of approximately 70 ml. So the right ventricle can generate 70 ml, left ventricle can generate a 70 ml of stroke volume approximately. And of course, this comes with a lot of complications as well. But the studies say that the outcomes are similar to that of LVADs for left ventricular failure. So you can use it as a BTT for now, but not as a destination therapy. And of course, the definitive, the most definitive Therapy for patients who are suffering from advanced heart failure is going to be heart transplantation. So what is the status of heart transplantation in the world, US and in India right now? In the US, approximately 2,500 heart transplants are being done every year. And the survival is approximately 85% at one year for adult heart transplants and 90% at one year for 
pediatric heart transplants and the overall median survival after heart transplantation is approximately 11 years. It's a good procedure actually to be honest. It's a good treatment because if a patient is developing advanced heart failure at 55 or 60 years of age, median survival of 11 years means that the patient can live up to their normal life expectancy as a whole. So it's overall good treatment to be honest. And you all know that who did the first heart transplant? It was done in 1967 in South Africa by someone called as Dr. Christian Bernard. What is the status in India though? In India, according to 2018 and 19 data, I couldn't get the 2020 data, but according to 2018 and 19 data, approximately 200 heart transplants are being done against 600 donations every year. So this is a universal rule in the entire world. Only 30 percentage of donations will be translated into actual heart transplantation. That is because of various issues, which is beyond the scope of the current discussion.